Steinman, I know Medical Pavilion is your manor, but you might want to cogitate on this. Ocean water is colder than a witch's tit. If you don't heat the pipes, the pipes freeze. Pipes freeze, pipes burst. Then rapture leaks. Now, I realize you're a posh sort of geezer, and frankly, I don't give a toss if you piss or go fishing. But once rapture starts leaking, the old girl's never gonna stop. And then I'll be sure to tell Ryan he's got you to thank. And we're back. This is Mr. New Vegas, and I feel sling magic in the air tonight. And I'm not just talking about the gamma radiation. Senate! In session today! No assemblies in the vicinity! No gaming! No prostitution! May all the gods bless our sacrosanct father, Gaius Julius Caesar! So, how is lore presented in your game? I'm of course talking about that endless process called world building. Even games where the setting is provided, we still have to fill in the details. And traditionally this is a GM role, and the only part of the world building allowed for players is description of their own characters. You'll have to excuse that I've got some errands to run today. This is actually a very easy task to share with your players. Uh, Apocalypse World does it by encouraging the Master of Ceremonies to ask the players things like, What does your holding smell like? How do people get by? What does it feel like when you open your mind to the psychic maelstrom? Minspend Youth takes us a step further with players setting scenes, even more than the Authority or GM does. Burning Wheel even puts mechanics to this. Players can create facts or even NPCs in the world around them. GM of course has veto, and failed dice can create complications. This can easily be adapted to other games. In Dread, for example, if a player says that they have a flashlight, I'll allow them to have it, if they make a poll. Now there are people, some who might even be watching this, who consider the idea of giving players the ability to create the world around them to be disruptive at best and a threat to their game at worst. So let's address that. Personally, I don't play with people who'd intentionally disrupt the enjoyment of other people at the table. As for being detrimental to the story, well, I don't see the story as belonging only to me. This has almost never been an issue, and when it does come up, it's very easily resolved. And if you can't trust your players to help establish your game world, what does that say about your players? Or more importantly, what does it say about your game? There's also something to be said for player investment. A world they help build is going to be more meaningful to them. The biggest thing for me, though, is the creative work that comes from more than one mind is made better for that collaboration. It's probably pretty obvious that I'd say this, role-playing gamers are very creative people. So use that. Get more ideas. Let them have a sounding board. Let ideas grow from something good into something great. I'm going to be using this piece of historic concrete as an analogy here. This side shows what the creator had in mind. No other hands were given input. And on this side, input was permitted. Given the chance, people have expressed themselves. Perhaps I'm comparing some games unfairly here, but which would you rather have as an analogy for your style of GMing? Well, let's take words and translate them into actions. What do you think?